Welcome everybody. What I want to do is show you how to find the sine of x when given a right triangle. And we have our three uh, lengths of our triangle, which our hypotenuse is 40. The reason why I know it's the hypotenuse is because it's directly opposite of my 90 degree angle. Um, 32, I'm sorry, I forgot actually to label these. This is going to be my x, y, and z. Um, my angle x, um, 32 is going to be my adjacent side. The reason why I know it's my adjacent, because your adjacent is always going to connect your angle with your 90 degree angle. And then 24, which is going to be my opposite side, and the reason why is wall one, you know, kind of elimination. I mean, I already have my hypotenuse and my adjacent. That only leaves one more. But lastly, um, you can always look at it because it's directly opposite of the angle you're trying to figure out. So I want to find out what is the sine of x. And one thing we need to remember about the sine function is that the sine function, you know, sine function, you know, x, or, you know, sine of x, what that equals is your opposite side of your triangle over your hypotenuse. And you might say, well, which, you know, when is it going to be opposite or when is it hypotenuse? Well, it's always of the angle you're trying to find. So your sine of x is going to equal my opposite side, which will be 24, over my hypotenuse, which is 40. So therefore, I have sine of x equals 24 over 40. And now I can reduce that, reduce 24 down to 40. I need to figure out, well, what number divides evenly into 24 and divides evenly into 40. And I want to look at the largest number. So the largest number that goes into 24 and 40 is 8. So if I divide 24, let's actually just write it out for you. Divide 24 by 8, I get 3. And divide 40 by 8, I get 5. And that will leave me my last final answer, which will be the sine of x for this triangle is going to be 3 fifths. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you do sine of x. Thank you.